Okay, welcome back to the Wastewater Whiteboard. Today we are talking about TSS versus MLSS. This was a question that was pitched to me by a viewer. Thank you very much for that question. And um, this was in relation to something I stated in my Sludge Age versus MCRT video, which I'll link to at the very end of this video. You'll just be able to click on it. It'll be on the screen. Um, and you can see what I'm talking about when, when they ask this question. So in that video, I mentioned that when I do an MCRT or a Sludge Age calculation or something of that that caliber when you're using TSS as you're, you know, you're wasting it out or it's coming in. Um, I pretend MLSS is TSS because for the, it really demystifies the math. And uh, when I'm doing a chain of custody and turning my sample into the lab, MLSS is TSS. Um, I, you don't write MLSS on your chain of custody unless your lab tech knows exactly what you're talking about. You go to any third party lab and you write MLSS on your uh, chain of custody, they're going to ask you what you're talking about. It's happened to me a couple times. That's that's one of the reasons I, I know this is that uh, it, it literally happened to me um, when I was a you know kind of a baby operator. So TSS is your total suspended solids, and MLSS is your mixed liquor suspended solids. Okay, um, like I said, when you when you look at it through the lens of the laboratory procedure, all MLSS is considered TSS. It's all total suspended solids. It's just there's something a little nuanced about it. But not all TSS is MLSS, okay? No, it, far from it. So let's talk about what total suspended solid is, and we're gonna talk about what mixed liquor suspended solids is, and then we're gonna talk about lab similarities in the, in the procedures. Um, so total suspended solids is all the suspended solids in the wastewater. Inert, organic, volatile, uh, it's, it's everything. It's everything that's, that's suspended that is solid. There is biology present, but it's not activated. Okay, and I'll explain what that means over here. It's not activated. It is, like I said, it's made of inert matter, but also VSS, which is a large percentage of the TSS is volatile suspended solids. By the time it gets to the bio biological process, it should be mostly VSS. That's the food for the microorganisms. Through preliminary treatment and primary treatment, you should have gotten out a lot of the inert stuff. Um, and we're talking grit, sand, uh, flushable, flushable wipes, <laughs> um, collections guys, you know, and gals, you know, um, uh, things that jam up pumps are typically not going to be considered food. So, um, that's your inert stuff. You're targeting that in some other processes and you're targeting the volatile suspended solids in your, um, biological process. And you want to remove TSS. There is a positive correlation between BOD and TSS. But not all, just like not all TSS is MLSS, not all BOD is TSS, okay? Not all TSS is BOD. They have a correlation, but, um, you know, you've got nitrogenous BOD, which is typically going to be liquid ammonia and TKN, really, uh, uh, total keeled all nitrogen. It has a BOD load to it, and um, that's not solids. So that's just an example of, you know, a lot of the VSS is BOD, but it's not, not all the BOD in the wastewater. Okay, sorry if I kind of went over your head there. Um, you can ask a question about that if you want, and I'll, I'll definitely be covering that when I get into nitrogenous BOD versus carbonaceous BOD. So you want to remove this stuff. You want to get it out of there. It's one of our biggest targets in wastewater treatment. And it's just there. It's floating around. It's not doing anything. Like it's, it's, it's just, it's, it's exerting an oxygen demand is pretty much all it's doing for us. It's not, it's, 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 it's um, yeah, it's not helping us in any way. Okay, so before I go to the mixed liquor suspended solids, if you're getting anything out of this video so far, please like and subscribe, pass it to your friends. This will be my only commercial for the channel, <laughs> but um, we're, we are in a growth, we're, we're growing this thing, I'm trying to build community around this. Um, and uh, yeah, so there's that. MLSS is the mixed liquor suspended solids. That is a specific definition. It is all suspended solids under aeration in an activated sludge plant. You do not have MLSS in a trickling filter or a pond. This is, a, this is a specific term to activated sludge. And by the way, I say under aeration. Uh, I'm also including the solids in this, the clarifier, but you shouldn't be keeping like a five foot sludge blanket in your clarifier. Uh, they call it the inventory in some, I don't call it that, but they call it the inventory in some places. You shouldn't really be keeping a lot of inventory in your secondary clarifier. So, um, that's why I'm saying all suspended solids under aeration because the little bit you have in your secondary should be returning to aeration uh, very quickly. Okay, it's all part of the process. And um, and for the advanced folks, yes, 
you, you can go through an anoxic and an aerobic and an anaerobic zone, but let's just keep this simple for right now. I don't want to, I don't want to get nitpicky. It is biologically activated. Okay. You put this stuff under a microscope, you can, um, you can see it's teeming with biology and, and it is, it is by design. We are, um, using strategies, uh, mostly aeration, aeration strategies to, uh, create certain environments that attract a certain biology that consumes the wastewater. And I'm going to get that into that when we start talking about flock formation. It is cons comprised mostly of MLVSS, the mixed liquor volatile suspended solids. This is the stuff that eats the waste. Okay. This is, this is what the VSS food goes and the MLVSS consumes it. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, the MLSS is all the solids. The MLVSS is the, um, percentage that is volatile and you're, you're typically going to see, um, you know, over 75% is good. Uh, I actually run around 90% volatile. Um, I've got a lot of good pre, you know, it goes through several phases before it gets to my aeration basin. So I don't have a lot of inert stuff floating around in there. Um, when I get to preliminary treatment, when I get to that video, I'll tell you about this one activated sludge plant where you can see like, like all sorts of stuff <laughs> floating around because it didn't have any preliminary treatment. It was wild. Um, but, uh, you want to manage it. You're not trying to get rid of your MLSS. You're managing it. So you will, you will have target wasting rates where you are wasting a certain amount of, uh, MLSS to a digester or a thickener or whatever you're doing, um, so that you can keep the amount that you want. And there's in bigger plants, I don't do it. I don't need to do it. Um, but in bigger plants, you're going to see, um, people getting into microscopy. Um, because when it gets off the rails in bigger plants, it's a lot harder to rein in than a smaller plant. And so uh, there's, you know, all sorts of uh, microorganisms you're looking for. And if you see an overabundance of, you know, a certain microorganism that's a higher life form that could indicate that it's too old. Um, or if you see an overabundance of a, you know, another microorganism that's, that's um, a lower life form, uh, that could indicate that it's too young. Um, so you're looking for whatever your plant strategy is, you're looking for a certain um, a certain microorganism presence. And so I, I, I don't want, I'm kind of getting into it, but I, I don't want to get into the weeds here, especially for grades one and two, you're not going to be asked about microscopy. You might get a stock ciliate question. Um, maybe, uh, but, uh, that stuff typically starts showing up around your grade three. Um, but you want to manage it. You're not trying to remove it. This is, this is a harnessed, uh, biology, it's the biomass. And then flock formation versus just there. So flock, what is flock? Flock is the best. I'm trying to come up with a good way to describe flock for the layman. Think about um, static cling on, in your dryer. Like your, your clothes came out all staticky and they're sticking to you. Um, that's a great example of flock. It kind of gathers to itself. And this biology, these bacteria uh, create flock. And another kind of, you know, lower level description I can, I can use for this is when the mixed liquor goes into the clarifier it forms this flock okay and it creates what i would say is kind of like a metaphorical net and it pulls everything down to the bottom of the clarifier and what what's left on the top is clear water supernatant that goes on to the next and you might have some scum layer on the top that's that's fairly normal you've got things to deal with that but stuff in the middle is fairly clear and it um it go, goes on to the next process whatever that process might be um, it could be the end of the process. Um, so uh, you have flock formation versus it just being there flopping around. Okay, so those are the major differences between TSS and MLSS. Um, if there's an experienced operator out there and you think I missed something or there's something you want to add, please put it in the comments below. Um, these are the things that I felt <clears throat> were the biggest, excuse me, <clears throat> sorry about that. These are the things I thought were the biggest compare and contrast between TSS and MLSS, but by all means, please uh, add, add to the conversation. I love it. Okay, so lab similarities. Um, like I've said a few times already, the lab procedure for MLSS is TSS, okay? And the lab procedure for MLVSS is VSS. Okay, so what are these procedures? You take a one liter sample, and uh, you take a filter and you measure the weight of that filter. It's called a tear weight. And then you pour that one liter sample through the filter. And, and oftentimes actually with uh, something thick like an MLSS, which is gonna be you know 5,000 milligrams per liter, mine's 8,500 milligrams per liter. You have like a vacuum pump on there to like pull the water through. 
So if you don't, it doesn't really work that well, and the and it it's kind of a it just doesn't work. So you use a vacuum pump to pull that water through, and then you put it uh, you weigh it. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of water in that in those solids still, like you know in them, and so you weigh it before. And then you put it in what's called a desiccator and you heat it up to 140 degrees Celsius and then you weigh it after it's dry. Um, and so in that, in that desiccator, all that liquid goes away, it evaporates. Okay? And you're left with the dry solids and then you weigh it afterwards. So uh, you have your uh, weight of your filter, the weight of your solids with water, and then you have the weight of your filter and solids without water. And then you just do some simple math and you can figure out from there how much solids, total suspended solids you actually have, okay? Um, if you want more detailed version of that, you can look up the standard methods. Uh, those of you taking your grade three and higher, uh, I suggest you do understand tear weight, and I, I suggest you understand what a desiccator is and know that it's 104 degrees Celsius. It might actually show up as 103 to 105 degrees Celsius, okay? Just depends on what test you're taking and how specific they wanna be. Um, and then, you know, look up time frames and all that other, so, you know, sample size is a leader, but, but, you know, do your own research too. Um, this is a supplement. This video series is a supplement to your, um, your studying. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to clear concepts up if you're confused, but you should, you should really be looking at standard methods when it comes to, um, lab procedures. Okay. VSS and MLVSS. Again, when I do my MLVSS, I write VSS on my chain of custody and my bottle and it's all those steps for the TSS, but we do one more thing and we put it, uh, we take that and we've weighed it, we know our TSS, but now we put it in a muffle furnace at 550 degrees Celsius and we light it up, okay? We burn everything that's organic and volatile and it goes bye-bye. And then we weigh it at the end of the burning and uh, that tells us what our volatile solids are. The only thing we're left with is inert matter at that point, stuff that would not have burned, okay? Um, and so I don't know if I mentioned it, but it's 104 degrees Celsius. Make sure that those temperatures <clears throat> are in Celsius because you might see, they might ask you Fahrenheit or Celsius. You'll have, you know, what temperature, temperature is your desiccator at or your muffle furnace, let's say that one. And uh, it's 550 degrees Celsius. And then the next, you know, that's A and B is going to be 550 degrees Fahrenheit. So just know these are in Celsius. All right. So those are the lab procedures. Uh, and like I said, Go, go research all of the, all this stuff in your study manuals. Um, um, I am here to clear, clarify things for you. If you have any questions about any of this, please put it in the comments below. If you have anything to add, please put it in the comments below. Um, if you think that I left something out that should be mentioned, um, please, uh, yeah, I, I'd, I'd love for people to add uh, to this and, and help the community out, help people pass their exams. And with that, we will see you guys in the next video.